Hey everyone, Azim here. We are starting chapter five, the integumentary system. We just finished talking about the tissue, the basics of tissue, uh, particularly epithelial tissue and connective tissues. Uh, here, we're talking about our first system. If you remember from the very first set of videos, I said that, that we would have talk about different levels of organization. We started with cells, or I guess I should go here. We started with cells and molecules, or molecules and cells, the smallest things. Cells are the smallest unit of life. Cells make up tissues, and then tissues make up organs and organ systems. The integumentary system, which is made of your skin, hair, nails, and glands, they all make up this full system to cover, protect, and do other things for your body. So we'll understand all the different cells, cell layers that we find uh, in the skin, uh, in the superficial layer called the epithelium and deeper layers, the dermis and hypodermis. We'll look at structures that we find in the skin, glands, hair, nails, and how they contribute to overall skin function. And we'll also go over some uh, interesting uh, skin conditions uh, by, the, by the end of this. It'll also be important to recognize not only the gross anatomy of skin and hair and nails and glands, but also the, hist the histology of it. So we'll be taking a look at uh, histology during our lab section. Skin, of course, is really essential for covering us up. Without skin, we'd just be very, very exposed, easy to get infection, very delicate, everything would fit, spill out. We need some way to contain all this stuff that's inside of us. Um, so that's a general reason why we need skin. But when we look at skin, it's really complex. This model of skin here, you can see that this is the superficial portion, the surface. You can see a hair here. But then there's other, all kinds of things here. You have nerve endings, glands. We'll be, meant, we'll be going through all of this in the next three videos, identifying every single part and, of course, what they're important for. The skin is an organ and it's your largest organ. It covers your entire body. It's continuous with the mucous membranes that form the inner portion of your body. It's not actually inside, it's outside, but covered up. But your mucous membranes line your tracts. If you remember in the previous video, mucous membrane lines tracts, like say in your oral cavity, but then on the outside, that's cutaneous membrane. Cutaneous membrane is on the outside of your body while mucous membrane is on the inside of your body. You've got cutaneous membrane, that's part of your skin. Deep to cutaneous membrane, you have subcutaneous layers. The subcutaneous layer is made of adipose. You have exocrine glands, like sweat and, and sebaceous glands, we'll get to those in a minute or several minutes. Hair and nails, all of those things make up your integumentary system, your, your skin and hair and nails and all that. So that's what we'll be talking about in the next uh, few videos. Besides protection, which I think is the obvious thing that skin does, skin can also be for absorption. Things, chemicals or other things can make its way through these layers of cells into your body. Some things are better more than, some things can more easily get through than others, but things can be absorbed through. This, the skin can secrete. We have glands in our skin that secrete to the surface. So we'll be going over some important glands that we find. Since our skin is on the outer portion of our body, it's great for sensation. There's different types of sensory receptors that we'll be going over to, uh, in these videos and also once we get to the nervous system. Our skin can also contract. We have myoepithelium, M-Y-O, that, that root word is referring to muscle. Myoepithelium is for pushing things out. You find them around glands, for instance, so that you can squeeze out substances to the surface of your skin. Uh, maybe you, one another way that you've seen contraction in your skin is when you get goosebumps. It's when the specific muscle attached to your hair contracts. So uh, we have all kinds of functions, all kinds of reasons why we have skin besides protection, but protection is probably your primary one. <clears throat> uh, 
The most superficial layer of your skin is called the epidermis. Epi means on top. Dermis means it's on top of the dermis. And we're go we'll go over the derma dermis layer next. But epidermis is the most superficial layer. You can see my epidermis. My epidermis is shown. Um, in this histology at the, on the left side, it's this tissue here. And if you remember what cutaneous membrane is made of, what the superficial layer of skin is made of, it is made of keratinized stratified squamous epithelium. There's that word epithelium. Epithelium is the name of the overall tissue. Epi means on top. You always find epithelium at the superficial layer. Well, sort of, we'll get to examples where it's not quite, but anyways, epithelium is covering and epithelium makes up the epidermis. Non, excuse me, keratinized stratified squamous epithelium will always make up the epidermis, which is the superficial layer of your skin. You can also see that in this uh, picture at the bottom right, the epidermis is this layer going along with the squiggly lines here. That's the epidermis. Like all epithelium, it is avascular. It does not have blood vessels. But these cells, they, they reproduce a lot. They undergo mitosis a lot so that the top layer can flake off and serve as a protective scaly barrier. Uh, we have two basic types of skin. Most of the skin on your body is thin. We'll get to that in a second. But there are two, three basic places where we find thick skin. Thick skin is, as the name suggests, is thicker. Your anterior digital region, there are your fingers, fingertips. Your palmar region is your palm. And your plantar calcaneal region. Plantar is the sole of your foot. Calcaneal is the heel of your foot. Really two places, your anterior hand and inferior foot. Those are the uh, two major places, two, three major places where you find thick skin. Why is skin here thicker? One important reason is because you have high abrasion in these areas, lots of friction. You're always touching things with your hands. You're always walking on your feet. You want that skin to be thicker to withstand all that, all that uh, abrasion. But besides that, what do these areas have in common? Think about it. What what does the sole of or sole of your foot and the palm of your hand have in common besides being thicker skin? There's no hair. No hair is found in these areas. Also, this is more noticeable in people who have darker skin, but there's less pigment. There's less pigment, less uh, melanin found in your palms and your soles in thick skin. Those are some characteristics. One reason why there's less pigment, uh, melanin, is, uh, its purpose is to protect you from UV radiation. It's a harmful uh, radiation for your cells. Since you have so many layers here, it's harder for UV ultraviolet radiation to penetrate the skin. So it doesn't need as much protection. It doesn't mean you shouldn't protect it. We'll get to that later. We'll talk about skin cancer, but that's why you don't produce as much. You don't need as much pigment protection. And hair, um, that would just get in the way if we're trying to grip something. Let's take a look at the, the diagram on the right first. You can see that there are, it's, we've delineated five layers. Thick skin has five layers. One, two, three four, five, or five layers. This really, and then if we look at the histology on the left, this really thick layer is all dead cells. Thick skin has a very thick superficial layer. The name of that superficial layer is stratum corneum. The word stratum means layer. 
corneum, we'll get to that in a minute, but the most superficial layer is very, very thick. It has five layers. We're gonna see that thin skin has only four. The extra layer that thick skin has is this one here that I'm highlighting in yellow. It's called stratum lucidum. It's a thin layer just inferior or deep. It's a thin layer deep to stratum corneum called stratum lucidum. So that's the basics of thick skin, but we'll of course look at this uh, epidermis in more detail here in a second. <clears throat> thin skin only has four layers. There is no stratum lucidum. So you can see the difference here. There's a stratum lucidum here in thick skin. It's this light colored, it's very slight. It's this light colored section. That's stratum lucidum. There is no, there is no light colored section over here. You'll also notice how thick stratum corneum is. All this dead, layers and layers of dead flat cells, those stratified squamous cells, a lot of it in thick skin. There's there, it's it's there in thin skin, it's just not, not as much. Thin skin is therefore more sensitive. Everywhere else on your body is thin skin. Thin skin is therefore more sensitive and needs more pigment uh, to protect yourself from UV radiation or put on sunscreen or cover yourself with sunny and you don't have as much pigment or really everyone should put on sunscreen. But um, yeah, thin skin, thinner, smaller, smaller stratum corneum. The epidermis can be broken down into those layers. So let's go through all those, go through all those layers, starting with the deepest one. The deepest layer is called stratum basale. That's the Latin, and you say the E, stratum basale. Stratum means layer, basale means basal. It's the bottom one. In our histology, it's this single layer. Even though it loops up and down or kind of goes like a roller coaster, it's still just one even layer. That's stratum basale. This layer is closest to the, remember down here, this is the areolar connective tissue, which is vascular. So there's blood vessels here. There's blood vessels in the connective tissue deep to the epidermis. Because there are blood vessels here and because stratum basale is closest to it, these cells get the most oxygen and nutrients. They can therefore undergo mitosis. Mitosis takes a lot of energy. It's right next to blood vessels to keep, and, and by having oxygen and nutrients, it can keep the mitosis going. Older cells are pushed superficially. So older cells, the higher up, the more superficial, the older the cell. And these cells flake off and die. Or die and flake, I should say. In that order, they die and they flake off. I'm going to draw this on um, so what we've seen so far on my own whiteboard, so you can follow along and make sense of what's going on. So I'm going to switch over. Okay, here we have here we're going to draw a layer of skin, the epidermis. I'm going to use let's use purple.
this layer that I've drawn is going to be stratum basale. It's a single layer of cells. In stratum basale, we'll come back to that in a minute. In stratum basale, we have several different cell types. One of those cell types is called a melanocyte. A melanocyte, as the name suggests, is a cell that produces a protein called melanin. Melanin is a pigment. It's a protein. It's a pigment. Pigment like paint, paint is pigment. Everything that has color is, has pigment in it. Pigments can have other functions, but the function of this pigment is to absorb ultraviolet light, which is damaging to the DNA of cells. We want to protect DNA. By protecting DNA, we prevent mutation. Things like cancer could happen if our cells get mutated, if the DNA gets mutated. <clears throat> Melanocytes, take a look at the histology down here. Melanocytes have a clearish looking cytoplasm. So the ones that I'm circling here are likely melanocytes. Why I say likely, I'll get to that in a minute. And they're found in stratum basale. In this picture here, in this diagram, you can see this melanocyte. It has branches because it's going to produce a lot of protein and it's going to release by exocytosis. It's going to release proteins to superficial cells. So you can see the pigment being absorbed by superficial cells. That's how you get darker whether by tan or naturally because of genetics. You have melanocytes that are producing a certain amount of melanin. They release the melanin by exocytosis. It gets taken in by neighboring cells, by endocytosis. And by having the pigment inside of the cell, it can absorb that light, protect your nuclei, protect your DNA. Another cell type that you can find in stratum basale are Merkel cells. Uh, you, Merkel is a person's name. You might also see them called tactile epithelial cells. I'm going to call them Merkel cells. But Merkel cells, also found in stratum basale, they are an example of neuroepithelium. Remember we discussed this when we talked about special examples of epithelial tissue? Um, neuroepithelium acts like neurons because they can detect stuff. So they're good they're for sensation. And then they can relay that information to a neuron. In this case, we're detecting light touch, which makes sense because Merkel cells are found in the epidermis. Epidermis is the most superficial part of your body. And light touch will only go that far. You'd have to poke deeper to get a deeper stimulus. So Merkel cells, um, pictured in this, di in this diagram down here, communicates with sensory neurons. Communicates with sensory neurons. They detect light touch, physical touch. When we look at the histology, it's a little tricky. It's, hard to distinguish with compound light microscopes, it's hard to distinguish between Merkel cells and melanocytes. Merkel cells and melanocytes both have a clear cytoplasm. Merkel cells and melanocytes both have a clear cytoplasm. So if it comes time to the practical and I point to one, you won't see both choices. It's either going to be one or the other, but they do look like that. Going back to our drawing, <clears throat> that means in stratum basale, we have cells
Some cells are light colored in the, in the cytoplasm. This one could be a melanocyte. This one could be a Merkel cell. To show that this one's a Merkel cell, I will show it talking to, synapsing with a sensory neuron. Neurons can be really long and this neuron is extending somewhere else, maybe the spinal cord. So you can find melanocytes in stratum basale, you can find Merkel cells in stratum basale. What about everything else? What are the, what's, what's the major cell? These are not the major cells. Most of the cells that you find most of the cells that you find here in stratum basale are called keratinocytes. And these keratinocytes will undergo mitosis and produce the majority of the cells that you see in the, in the epidermis. The next layer up, which I'll color in orange, The next layer up is called stratum spinosum. And the most of the cells that you see here in stratum spinosum are keratinocytes, just packed together. I should actually draw them starting to get flatter. Remember, these are squamous cells. So let me show them as round, and then they start to flatten out the higher we go. We find keratinocytes in the stratum spinosum. The word spinosum means spinous. Scientists thought that keratinocytes looked prickly. So they're also called prickle cells. They look like they have little dots in them. A keratinocyte is a cell that produces keratin. We've mentioned keratin before. It's a protein. It's tough. It's waterproof. It integrates itself into the cytoskeleton. Take a look at a, one of these cells here. A single cell gets keratin integrated into the cytoskeleton, makes it more rigid and waterproof. <clears throat> so that by the time we get to the stratum corneum, we have these flat cells that still have keratin in them. Now they're very strong and waterproofed, thin scales. What's also important about these cells and about the epidermis in general is that they're linked together with desmosomes. Desmosomes are shown here that I'm, they're in red, but I'm coloring them in pink. Desmosomes are transferring force between cells. If one cell gets pulled, the other gets pulled with it. It's why uh, if your skin flakes, say from after a sunburn, why, you're, why you peel in, in layers, the cells stick together because they're held together by desmosomes. You can't see the desmosomes are really tiny, of course, but um, that's what's holding these keratinocytes together. Most of the cells you see here in stratum spinosum are keratinocytes.
There is one other cell found here though. It's called a Langerhans cell. Langerhans is the person's name. You might also see it called a dendritic cell. The word dendritic means branched, whoops. Langerhans cells found in the superficial portion of stratum spinosum, they are immune cells. They're white blood cells. Normally you find white blood cells in your blood, but these white blood cells, they can make their way into the skin, into the epidermis, and they can undergo this process of phagocytosis. That's what's happening here. This whole cell is engulfing, is engulfing something like a bacterium. It undergoes and phagocytosis engulfs that thing. And if you remember, once it engulfs that thing, creates this vesicle, this vesicle that you see here, then we can get lysosomes to fuse with that vesicle and degrade, digest whatever it engulfed, bacteria or whatever. These are protective white blood cells found in stratum spinosum. So we can add, oh, what do they look like under the microscope? Langerhans cells look just like Merkel cells and melanocytes. They're just found in stratum spinosum. Look at the clear, clearish cytoplasm. Adding that to our diagram, we can add Langerhans cells. with a lighter cytoplasm. Found in stratum spinosum. Langerhans cells have a lighter cytoplasm. They're found in stratum spinosum. Going more superficially, the next layer is called stratum granulosum. At this point, keratinocytes are starting to dehydrate and by dehydrating, by losing water, they start to flatten. Stratum granulosum is this darker layer. It's this darker layer that you see. It looks darker because these cells, in order to dehydrate, they need to make a special protein. They're making a special protein called keratohyalin, keratohyalin, and this keratohyalin has a dark dotty appearance. It looks like a bunch of granules, hence granular layer, stratum granulosum. And these granules of keratohyalin are what dehydrate the cell and make them flatter. So the cells are dying at this point. When you lose water, you're going to kill that thing. Water is essential for life. If it's thick skin, if it's thick skin, then we have stratum lucidum. Stratum lucidum is just a very thin layer, only three to five layers of, of cells. It's lighter colored. The word lucid means more clear. It's lighter colored. It's a thin, clear layer found only in thick skin. At this point, the cells are dead. They're flattened, dead flattened keratinocytes. The most superficial layer for all skin types, thin or thick, is stratum corneum. The word corneum means horned. Corn, horn, same thing in Latin versus English. Uh, maybe you know the word cornucopia, a cornucopia like in Thanksgiving pictures. It looks like a horn shape. Corn means horn. And horns, like an animal horn, is very tough. It's highly keratinized, same protein type to make the, the, their horns hard. Um, Stratum corneum 
really dead flattened cells, all interlocking thanks to those desmosomes. They flake off in order to protect the deeper layers. It's really thick. Whoops, too much. It's really thick in thick skin and thinner relatively in thin skin. Looking at this in our picture, let's draw this out. Our next layer is going to be darker and smaller. It's not as big as the other layers. The cells that we find here are getting flat and they, they are darker. These dots that I'm drawing in is Karata hyaline. Stratum granulosum. The karata hyaline is dehydrating these cells, making them flatter, killing them. If it's thick skin, so I'll draw thick skin on one, on one side. If it's thick skin, then we'll have a thin layer actually even thinner than that. We'll have a thin layer called stratum lucidum. And the cells are very thin and flat, they're dead. If it's thin skin, that layer doesn't exist. Finally, the most superficial layer is stratum Corneum, stratum corneum is very big in thick skin. It's not so big in thin skin. At this point, you can't really see individual cells. It's so thin and flat. Stratum corneum in thick skin and stratum corneum in thin skin. So I've just introduced a whole bunch of new words here. How are you gonna remember this? It's useful to have mnemonics. A mnemonic, at, uh, I'll spell it here in a second. If, if you're curious, whenever I use this word, a, the word is mnemonic. You don't really pronounce the M, mnemonic. Mnemonic is a memory device. If you don't remember, remember that word, don't worry about it. But a mnemonic is a memory device. So I'll just use the word memory device. We need memory devices to remember all these things that we're learning. There's so many terms that we're learning. So not only do we have to remember the terms, but we need to remember the order. This mnemonic, this memory device is true for thick skin.
come, let's get sunburned. We don't actually want to get sunburned, but this mnemonic, this phrase helps us remember the order. Come is for corneum, L is for lucidum, and this is only true again for thick skin. G is for granulosum. S is for spinosum. B is for basali. If it's for thin skin, you just remove the L. Corneum, lucidum, granulosum, spinosum, basali. In the next video, we'll go over the dermis and glands. We just went over the epidermis. So look out for that one. Let me know if you have questions, leave questions and comments in the discussion.